So, today's video is a two-parter. The first part, I will be doing the stay-at-home book tag, which I've been wanting to do for a while. It's very hyped up at the moment, and I can't wait to be involved. And then secondly, I reached 100 subscribers recently, and I'm amazed. Honestly, I cannot believe that 100 people actually want to sit down and watch me talk for a while. Like, I think I'm a relatively boring person. So the fact that people actually care enough about these videos to subscribe and watch and comment and everything, it blows my mind, honestly. And having not been on here for that long and getting 100 subscribers, it means the world to me. I honestly cannot thank everyone who has subscribed enough and I cannot tell you how much it means to me that people have actually chosen to subscribe to my channel. So honestly, one massive thank you to everybody. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please do. There's no reason why not. Um, but honestly, thank you so much. And because of that, I am in such a great mood. I am going to be doing a giveaway and I will tell you how to enter that at the end of the video. So I'm doing the stay at home book tag and that was originally created by Princess of Paperback and yeah, we're stuck inside, we're staying at home. Why not do a tag that shows that off? So I have my notes because I'm fairly useless at remembering. People will know that about me. I am very useless at remembering things. The first one is Laying in Bed, a book you could or have read in one day. and. I have the exact book because I did read it in one day and I was super proud of myself because it's a fairly big book. And that is Invisible by James Patterson and David Ellis. Now, Invisible is about a girl called Emmy who lost her sister a few years ago. She works as part of the FBI. She works not as an agent. She works as a um, kind of like a techie. I don't know what the official term is but she works as like a techie person basically she discovers similarities between her sister's death and other people's deaths now these people have nothing in common they died in a house fire and it was ruled as an accident but emmy knows that something is different there are too many things that are eerily similar and no one will listen and believe her but because it's her sister she wants to prove that it wasn't an accident and that her sister was murdered she single-handedly decides to go on this journey and try and figure out the truth of who killed her sister. And I absolutely love this book. I love James Patterson. David Ellis is an excellent writer. And it, it also has a sequel called Unsolved, which follows on from this one. And I love that book as well. So great series. I read Unsolved in one day too. And I think this was one of the first books I actually read the entire thing in one day. So bigging that up. I absolutely love it. Now, the next one is Snacking, and that is a guilty pleasure book. And I don't really have guilty pleasure books because I enjoy what I read, so I'm not really feeling guilty about any of it. But one I will say is a guilty pleasure because it's very much a YA middle grade book, and I love it because it is my favourite book of all time and that is Nemesis. Now this one is Nemesis Into the Shadows. It is a series of four books and it follows a young boy who wakes up, he doesn't remember his name, he remembers nothing about himself, but what he knows is that somebody is after him. He wakes up, finds a dead body, and then finds out someone's after him to try and silence him. And it spans four books. It is the best book series I read when I was in school. And I've read them about five or six times since then. And I'm in love with it. This is my favorite book of all time. So if you have not read this book, if you have never heard of this book, get this book. It's set in Scotland. It doesn't actually say that it's set in Scotland, but I know the author's Scottish and I think it hints to a few things about it being set in Scotland. So I'm going to go with that it's set in Scotland. So get this book, check it out. If you love YA middle grade, it's mainly YA. I have to be honest, there's quite a lot of dark elements in this. If you love a bit of YA and you love a bit of mystery, check this out because it is really, really good. Now, 
The next one is Netflix, and that is a series you want to start. And before you come for me, I want to let you know I have read the books already. I just want to restart them. Harry Potter. I have read them. I want to make it clear. I have, before all of you come at me for never reading Harry Potter. I have read them. But I last read the books just before the final movie came out. And that came out in 2011. So I haven't read the books for nine, nine years. Getting on for ten years now. And... Really, I'm due a reread because I absolutely adore the series, and there's no reason why I haven't reread them other than the fact that I've tried getting into other books. So, this is definitely a priority for me to restart because I do need to start it again very soon because I do love it and I want to I wanna reread it. So, I need to. <laughs> now, the next one is Deep Clean, and that is a book that has been on your TBR forever. And I have. Wicked by Gregory Maguire. Now, I love musicals. Anyone that knows me will know that I love musicals. Wicked is my favourite musical and I haven't even read the book and I feel ashamed that I have not read the book. So, this has been on my TBR since, since about 2012. I think it's about 2012. And I've had it, I'm like, yep, absolutely want to, but I've always been scared of reading it because Wicked is my favourite musical, I absolutely love it, and I'm scared that I'm not going to like the book. So I never actually bothered, but I really do want to read it, I need to just push myself into doing it, and I just need to kind of force myself in there. And it is, it's just a fear of loving an adaptation of it so much if I don't like the original does that make me a bad fan or does that make the musical any less special and I know the answer's no I know it has no impact on how much I love the musical but it's important that I like this for me it's just psychologically it's important so I've not read it in ages well I've not read it since I owned it but I need to and force me to read this guys come on judge me make me do it <laughs> thank you now the next one the next one is animal crossing and that is a book i bought because of the hype now a lot of you will know from watching my channel that i don't really do hype books i tend to do backlist books because one i am extremely stingy and refuse to pay a lot of money for a new release because a lot of hardback books that are new releases in england priced round about around about £20, somewhere between £15 and £20. And I absolutely refuse to pay £20 for the book. So I tend to wait for a few months or a year or something when the prices start going down or someone sells a used copy on eBay and then I go for that. And that is why the majority of my books are books <laughs> that are really old because I've bought them when the price has gone down. It's only on very rare occasions that I will buy new books or if my family buy me books for my birthday or Christmas or you know things like that then I can get a new book or if I find it really cheap like The Guest List by Lucy Foley found that for five pound that's fairly new was getting it but a book I bought because of the hype it cost me 11 pound which is still really expensive for a book but it's not that bad and that is The 10,000 Doors of January by Alex E. Harrow and Really, it's made me realise why I don't buy books for the hype, because I didn't know anything about the book, I just thought it looked absolutely stunning, and I thought, I have to have it, I have to read it, and then I kind of read what it was about, and to be fair, I forgot what it's about, so I'm going to be useless, but I know it's about a character who finds, is it, they find a door and it takes them into a new world or something like that. I keep forgetting what it's about. I kind of like going into books blind, so I just tend to have a quick skim of a blurb and then forget everything about it. But when I read it, it was kind of very flowery writing, purple writing, and I don't really like that. And I'm scared that I'm not going to like the book now. But I really do want to read it. It's a hyped book, so a lot of people love it. Maybe I will be one of them people. So I have to say, it was a hype book. Don't do it very often. It better have been worth it. And that is all I have to say about that one. Now, 
The next one is Productivity, and that is a book I learned from, or a book that had an impact on me. And I feel like I've spoken about this book quite a lot this year, The Host by Stephanie Meyer. Now, if you've seen any of my reviews or anything where I've spoken about The Host, you will know why I love this book. It has such a good social message because The Host is about aliens taking over the world and people surviving and there's also the love story that I don't really mention because that is not what I took from the book. But it's about people surviving, aliens taking over the world and the main reason aliens took over the world is because the world was such a mess. People were killing each other, giving so little care to other people in other countries who were suffering to the homeless. They didn't care. They just cared about their own lives and the world had become such a mess that the aliens thought we'll take over and we will make the earth a better place. And it got me thinking so much on where we are in society. How are we? What do we do? Do we do enough for the people around us? Do we care enough about people around us? And honestly, the answer is no. I don't think we do enough for homeless people. I don't think we do enough for other countries. I mean, similarly, other people probably don't do things for us. But the issue always remains we don't help each other as a planet, as a species, we do not help each other enough. And why why do we not help each other? Why do we care so little about other people? Or why do we pretend that we care a lot but don't actually do anything to help? And it, it left me shaken doing this because it made me just sit and think, where are we heading? What does it mean for us? You know, if I was in any situation, if I was homeless, if I had no family, if I was involved in a terrorist attack, would somebody help me? And it made me think, would the answer be no? And it made me think, if I had witnessed somebody in that experience, would I have helped them? And I like to think I would, but it happens every day. And do I? Not as much as I'd like to. So... I could go on, I could literally talk about this forever and ever with someone, so I'm just going to leave it there and move on. And the next one is FaceTime, and that is a book you was gifted. And I have two books for this because I was recently gifted them both by some amazing, amazing friends. And that is A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson, and They Both Die at the End by Adam Silvera. And I love... I've loved the idea of these books for a while. Like A Good Girl's Guide to Murder is about a murder that happened and the case was closed. Everyone knew who did it. That was it. And then a young girl as part of a project decides to check into the case to see whether what everyone's saying happened is actually what happened. And basically you can see where that's going. And then They Both Die at the End is about two young boys finding out that they're, I assume they're young boys, Mateo and Rufus, they're boys' names, two young boys finding out that they are going to die at the end of the day. And there's an app that allows you to make friends with someone who's going to die that day. And they, they basically have a last friend. And I don't really know much more about it because I feel like going through this book will really spoil it, like reading the blurb's going to spoil it. I just want to read it and enjoy the journey. I mean, obviously, the ending is spoiled. How could it not be? But I do just want to enjoy the journey as I go along, so I haven't really read too much into it. And then there are two more, but not related to books. Yeah, self-care. What's one thing you've done recently to look after yourself? I do a lot, actually, to look after myself. I mean, personally, I very rarely leave the house anyway. Like, I do a lot of volunteer work at theatre groups and I like seeing my friends and obviously work, but I don't really leave the house that often, so being told to stay in the house doesn't have that much of an impact on me. Um, obviously, staying in 24-7 does, but for the most part, I'm okay because it's kind of what I do in my day-to-day -day life anyway because I don't work full-time. I work part-time and I volunteer in evenings so I have a lot of free time which I spend at home so that is fine by me but I've got a jigsaw puzzle. I would show you the jigsaw puzzle but I'm actually really not doing well and I've been doing it for three weeks so I'm not going to subject myself to the torment. 
and I colour in, I do puzzle books, I watch a lot of TV, I listen to a lot of music. I, I'm a theatre performer. I sing, I make up dances in my head. I have a leading desk full of scripts for plays that I've read. And one of the main things I'm doing is tonight, me and my friends from my theatre group are having a quiz night. And we did it last week and we thought it was very fun, so we're deciding to do it again this week. And what we're doing this week is we've added a theme. We've said it's fancy dress. And the host, who is my friend Hannah, she decides on the theme and we have to go in fancy dress. And she decided to make it an Andrew Lloyd Webber theme. So for my costume, I will show you my costume. I'm not going to get into the full costume because that's a lot of effort, but basically... I feel like you can tell who I'm going as. So that is my costume. It's just fun. It's just a bit of a laugh. And honestly, it just keeps us entertained because we're going through very dark times at the moment. There are people like me who I think are quite lucky that I do this in my everyday life. So it doesn't really affect me that much. But there are people this is really hitting hard. And being able to talk to my friends and do weird, wacky things like a quiz night with fancy dress themes really makes me happy. So that's what we're doing. And that is a lot of ways I do self-care. So there is a bonus question and that is name a book that is coming out soon. And I've mentioned this book a lot. I've mentioned the book series a lot. I love the Maximum Ride book series by James Patterson. And the book that is coming out this year is kind of a follow on from the main series. And that is Hawk. And I cannot wait. I mean, I've not read the entire series, so might hate it and not want the book in the end but as of now i am really looking forward to heart coming out and i cannot wait to actually have the book i'm really looking forward to it i'm really tired i'm yawning so sorry <laughs> and that is it that was my stay at home book tag so now just to end i want to talk to you about the giveaway that i'm doing so because i reached 100 subscribers i was in such a great mood i'm really bouncing around the room really I'm I'm really happy like because it's blown my mind and I can't believe it so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing a QA, and a just for a bit of a laugh people ask me random questions it can be anything book related it can be about my life I do a lot of theatre work I love musicals I work for a charity I'm a mental health professional um it can be about anything my life my personal life my book life, my work, my hobbies, anything at all, just ask away. I'm going to be doing a £10 Amazon wish list giveaway and what you need to do to enter the giveaway is to subscribe to the YouTube channel because that's the main thing. So I want you to subscribe to my YouTube channel and then I want you to go down into the comments and drop a question for my Q&A. And one question will equal one entry into the giveaway. And you can ask as many as you want, but I will be limiting the number of questions to five per person because otherwise I could get like a hundred questions per person and that's just too much. So the maximum amount of entries you can have is five. And what I want for you to do is literally subscribe to the channel, put a comment down below, as many questions as you want, but maximum of five entries. And that is pretty much it. I need you to put your contact information down below. So a Twitter handle or an Instagram handle at something like that just so I can contact you should you win and is that it what else I've never done a giveaway before I feel like I've probably left some important information out if I have please let me know if I've not go ahead and do it so that is all I want to say thank you to everybody who has subscribed to me so far I absolutely cannot believe it I cannot express how grateful I am and just want to say thank you so that is all from me. Thank you all for watching. And just thank you, honestly. So I post every Monday, Wednesday and Saturday, then intermittently throughout the week. I'm going through my spiel. So until next time, see you later.